The Mechanism of Labor My name is Mulundano. I'm discussing the mechanism of labor. This should just last for less than 15 minutes. So let's look at uh, some important things that we need to know. Normal labor. So we had, since we are discussing the mechanism of normal labor, let us look at the characteristics of normal labor. What are the characteristics of normal labor? Uh, normal labor should, should be of spontaneous onset, meaning it should not be induced. It should begin on its own. Then sh the fetus should be in vertex presentation, meaning it's the head that is supposed to present and the part of the head is the vertex. The, the fetus should be mature of about 37 to 42 weeks gestation and there should be no complications to the mother nor the baby. The time frame from onset of labor to delivery should take for about 16 to 18 hours. Okay, so these are the four characteristics of normal labor. In case you are asked, you should pick from these uh, five points. So what is labor? It's defined as a sequence of uterine contractions that results in effacement and dilation or dilatation of the cervix and voluntary bearing down efforts leading to expulsion per vagina of the products of conception. So this is uh, the general definition of what labor is. Uh, labor is simply um, the sequence of uterine contractions. Of course, there must be uterine contractions in sequence and these uterine contractions will lead to effacement which is thinning and taking up of the lower part of the uterus which is the cervix and dilatation of the cervix of course and the woman should be voluntarily pushing the products of conception out of the uterus so there must be maternal efforts of pushing out the products of conception and these should be exposed through the vagina. Mechanism of labor is defined as uh, the changes in the position of fetal head uh, in respect to the maternal pelvis during parturition. So this definition of mechanism of labor is uh, that of normal labor and uh, all those changes that are taking place in the position of the fetal head uh, during the delivery process are the ones that form the mechanism of labor. So this mechanism of labor has got stages. It's easily explained by identifying the stages that usually take place. So on the next slides, we are going to discuss uh, these stages of mechanism of labor. So my first stage here is uh, engagement. Well, then we have descent, flexion, internal rotation of the fetal head, crowning, then we have extension, birth of the fetal, fetal head, then uh, restitution, rotation, this is internal rotation of the shoulders, external rotation of the head, birth of the shoulders, and birth of the body. So these 12 uh, stages of uh, the mechanism of labor can easily be summarized to about 9 stages because some stages are usually combined. So I've decided to um, list them one by one for easy understanding and easy explanation. Maybe that would help you grasp the concept easily. So let's begin looking at uh, our first stage which is engagement. So we have been told that uh, engagement is simply the passage of the widest diameters of the presenting part below the pelvic inlet. Okay, so the, the, uh, the pelvic inlet or the pelvic brim um, is the part which is uh, just above the symphysis pubis. Actually, it, it forms the symphysis pubis and the sacral promontory of the woman, of the woman's pelvis. So as the fetal head uh, dis, dis, descends or engages, it, it enters in the pelvis brim that uh, the engagement that we're talking about takes place. So how do you know that engagement has taken place? Okay, there will be a history of lightening, the appearance of um, urinary symptoms where the woman will have frequent micturation because the bladder has been uh, uh, suppressed or the fetal head is adding some pressure to the bladder making the bladder become smaller uh, and forcing the woman to be passing urine frequently and then 
the woman will feel some um, some relief of pressure in the fundus in the in the abdomen because the the fetus has uh, engaged in the pelvis it has descended a little bit and then allowing uh, some abdominal contents to be relieved of the pressure that the fetus was applying okay then on abdominal examination only two finger breaths will be able to uh, palpate the head we, we will be able to hold the head because part of the head has entered into the pelvis then on vaginal examination you actually um, discover that the sacral promontory will not be felt and the station of the head will be at zero when you look at this diagram here we have this line which is this one line this line okay it's a straight line from one ischiospine to the other to the other ischiospines so this line is a station zero okay just uh, on the ischiospines counting from the ischiospines going deeper that it, you, you begin with what negative one negative two up to negative five then from the ischiospines coming lower to the outlet of the vagina it is uh, positive you have positive signs up to positive five positive one up to positive five okay during vaginal exam so you feel that the fetal head is right on the ischial spines and you will not be able to feel the sacral promontory which this is the sacral promontory here you will not be able to feel it because the fetal head is right there descent uh, this is a continuous movement continuous movement of the of the fetus down into the pelvis okay so we are saying that in noliparas these are women whose pregnancy is the first the first pregnancy they've never been pregnant before and this is their first pregnancy we are saying engagement usually takes place before the onset of labor and further descent may not occur uh, until the second stage comes okay so descent does not take place in uh, noliparas until the second stage of labor while in multiparas descent begins with engagement multiparas are women who have had several pregnancies before it is gradually progressive till the fetus is delivered okay so uh, this descent is gradually progressive until the fetus is expelled uh, it is affected by the uterine contractions and thinning of the lower segment so descent is affected uh, by the contractions and the maternal efforts as well and also by the thinning or effacement of the cervix okay flexion the descending head meets the resistance of the pelvic floor the cervix and walls of the pelvis leading to flexion okay so the shorter suboccipital pragmatic diameter is substituted for the longer occipital frontal diameters so what usually happens is um, the chin of the fetus when flexion takes place will touch its chest okay so as the fetus is descending what happens is the uh, diameter which usually presents is the um, occipital frontal diameter which is this one here occipital frontal diameter this one this diameter is long is about 12 centimeters so when flexion takes place the diameter that we present is this one the sub occipital pragmatic diameter this one which is 9.5 centimeters this diameter is shorter so as you can see on this diagram here there's flexion and the part of the head leading is this part and not this part so this is also uh, another diagram just showing you what happens during flexion as the fundus is pushing down the baby with that pressure there's also pressure that the fetal head meets when the fetal head meets the pelvic floor muscles there's pressure that is applied at this point and flexion takes place if pressure is applied on this part meaning there'll be deflection the presenting part will be the face because the head is going to deflect this slide is just showing you the four uh, types of flexion we have poor flexion model flexion advanced flexion and complete flexion we have a b c and d 
expressed in these diagrams here. So <clears throat> for uh, advanced flexion is this one here which is C. We have seen the diameter which is presenting. In a poor flexion the shorter diameter here is not the one which is presenting. We want the shorter diameter to present down here for uh, proper for easy for easy delivery of the fetus. Okay. Internal rotation is simply the changing of position of the fetal head. Usually the fetal head is in the, is in its ox, uh, occipital transverse position which is OT. Occipital transverse position. If you look at this third diagram here, the fetus is in its occipital transverse position. And I think this is the right occipital transverse position because this side, this is where you find the right side, the right leg of the mother and the left leg of the mother is this side. So when this happens, um, when internal rotation takes place, this fetal head will rotate 45 degrees clockwise towards the symphysis pubis and then it, the occiput will be right below the symphysis pubis as shown in this fourth diagram here, fourth image. It's the occiput is right below the symphysis pubis because rotation has taken place by 45 degrees. When this happens, the face of the fetus is usually on the perineum. It's usually facing the perineum or the back side of the mother. Then the back of the head, which is the occiput, is facing the front side of the mother or the symphysis pubis. Okay. The muscles that are responsible for this rotation to take place are the muscles that we call the lavator ani muscles, which are V-shaped. This slide is just showing you how we view when we say uh, right occipital uh, position right occipital transverse position meaning the right side of the mother is this side and the left side of the mother is this side meaning the fetus is in this position okay right occipital transverse position right right occipital transverse position okay crowning Crowning is, a, is simply the stage where the fetal head is visible on the vulva and no longer recedes with each contraction. Okay, so uh, when crowning takes place, you, you can easily see the fetal head on the vulva. You can easily see the fetal head. As the diagram shows, which is below here, you can see the fetal head. Okay, so as the contractions take place, you can easily see uh, this this fetal head will not be able to recede. It will not be able to go back inside when there is no contraction. Okay, that's crowning. Usually, crowning takes place with the beginning of extension. As extension begins, crowning takes place. Okay, they are here the largest diameter of the fetal head is encircled by the vulva ring. The next stage is um, extension. The base of the occiput will be in direct contact with the inferior margin of the symphysis pubis. When, a, when extension takes place, the fetal head is usually born. Okay, and the, uh, the, the chin, the face, and the nose of the baby sweeps the perineum and it's born. So extension brings about the birth of the fetal head. The head is born by further extension as the occiput, bregma, forehead, nose, mouth, and chin pass successfully over the perineum. So you remember the fetal head was the fetal chin was touching the chest of the baby, but now it's no longer touching the chest. It has to extend and be born. When the head is born, what follows next is restitution. The head has to assume its a uh, normal position now in alignment with the body. So this is exactly what is happening in this uh, diagram that you can see here. The head has rotated back into its uh, normal position, realigning itself with the rest of the body. So you should not force restitution to take place. You should allow the head to rotate on its own. Okay, this usually takes place without intervention. Restitution is followed by a complete external rotation to transverse position. The occiput lies to uh, the occiput lies next to left maternal thigh. So when restitution takes place, there will also be uh, external rotation. And usually, 
the, this is another stage that you can talk about. External rotation usually happens at the same time with internal rotation. So the movement of the head due to the internal rotation of the shoulder as it comes in the anterior position diameter of the sorry as it comes in the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic outlet. This is visible externally in the in a direction opposite to internal rotation. It occurs in the same direction as restriction. Now the shoulders are in anterior position and anterior posterior diameter, the AP axis. Okay. So uh, internal rotation of the shoulders will be seen externally by the rotating head, which we call external rotation. So usually this happens at the same time. External rotation and internal rotation, they will take place at the same time. And they will take place after restitution or at the same time restitution is taking place. Okay. Then after external rotation has taken place, there will be birth of the shoulders. The first shoulder that will be born is the uh, anterior shoulder. Then the external, the posterior shoulder will also be born. And this is born by lateral flexion. Okay, this takes place by lateral flexion. After the birth of the both shoulders, there is birth of the body now. So uh, the rest of the body is born by spon born spontaneously by lateral flexion as well. On the next slide, we just have um, some. It's, it's just a summary of these uh, stages or yes, uh, stages of the mechanism of labor. Okay. Uh, I hope these stages are visible to you. You can easily see them. And um, I talked about the summary that you can easily summarize these stages into nine stages. And when you want to summarize them, these are the stages that you should not leave out. Engagement, descent, flexion, internal rotation, extension, restitution, external rotation, birth of the shoulders, and birth of the body. Okay, so these are the stages. Thank you for watching and um, please subscribe to our channel for more presentations like this one.